Well, a couple of videos back, I tore apart a farm wagon undercarriage that I'm going to rebuild and turn into a chuck wagon. I need to put all new wood in this undercarriage, so I have this all the iron sandblasted, and I did take the time to go and paint all this iron. Well, one of the first things I need to do in the rebuild process is to put new wood in the axles. Now, there was a while ago that I did a video explaining how axles are gauged, but at that time I was explaining how it was done on steel axles. So I'm going to go back a little flashback in time and bring out a little excerpt from that video. So in modern day alignments, when you take your automobile into the alignment shop, they adjust for three different things, caster, camber, and tow in Camber has to do, if you were looking at the vehicle front to back, has to do with the angle of the wheel side to side. Well, in a buggy or carriage, we are concerned about what would be camber on a, on a vehicle. It's called swing on a carriage. And the third thing in a vehicle that's uh, measured and adjusted is the tow-in. Well, that is also a concern on a buggy or carriage that they have this tow-in. And that old term is called gather. So we adjust a buggy or a carriage not so much for caster, but we do for camber and for tow. And those old terms are called gather and swing. Well, one of the main differences between those type of an axle, using an axle gauge and a hydraulic press to push these spindles into their correct position, on a wood axle for a farm wagon, these uh, measurements for the gather and swing have to be actually carved into the wood axle itself. So this video is going to go through the process of how I examine an old axle to find out where it is set and kind of the, give the general principles of the how and why uh, wood axles are gauged to go to a farm wagon. Well, these axles are actually still intact and are really nice to be able to measure off of. Sometimes you're going to find a farm wagon undercarriage that's either been wrecked, axles broken, or they're rotted so bad you can't tell just how they should have been set. So part of this is just to explain and to demonstrate how an axle gauge is set into a wood axle. Oftentimes I take a straight edge, as I'm going to show here, and show how the toe in or the gather is set on these axles. So you can see as I put a straight edge across the leading edge, if I measure from the end of the axle to my straight edge, one side has a half inch, the back side has five eighths of an inch. So you can see there is one eighth inch lead in the spindle on this wood axle very similar to what I do on a steel axle. But again, this has to be set so it can be carved in place, not pressed into place. And this also shows that the front axle and the rear axle are actually gauged the same, even though there are different diameters of wheels on both the front and the back. So these skeins, uh, inside these skeins don't come all the way down to the shoulder. I'm going to try to show you inside here with the use of this flashlight. You can see that down in the end there's a shoulder that comes up just short of these threads in this shoulder. It actually 
stops more about in this space here. So what we're measuring on the wood is actually from about this distance here. And if I run a tape measure inside down to this shoulder, it's going to be a different measurement than it's going to be clear here to the end. So this one ends up being 12 and a half inches from the shoulder inside to this point here on the skein. So the measurement here on the wood axle that I have a little X here is actually correlating to the collar on the skein. So from one point on one side of the axle to the other side is actually collar to collar similar to what it would be collar to collar on a steel axle. So now when I run a straight edge from these two collar to collars you can see the drop in the spindle angle on this wood axle. So now if you went back and watched that video regarding the axle gauge where I use it on a steel axle for a buggy or a carriage, you can see that the numbers are the same as they correlate to a wood axle. I use one eighth of an inch toe in or the gather and it also comes out being three eighths of an inch swing that brings the bottom spoke into plumb. So even though we're not using a regular axle gauge and steel axles that we can press through the press to put them in position, the measurements are the same. It's how we get to the end is a little bit different. On a wood axle, these have to be carved into position. For a steel axle, they can be pressed. So I've got some 16 quarter white ash here that I'm gonna use for axles and I'll get these blanks prepped down to size three and a half by four and a half, 60 inches overall. You know, it's very rare that I go through a week and I only focus on one project. Oftentimes I have multiple different jobs and projects that show up that I'm working on at once. Well, this week I've also got to bend some bows, run them through the steamer and bend some sheep wagon bows. So in the midst of working on these axles, I've got some bending to do.
So this is maybe a little more brief take on some of my steam bending. You are probably well aware that I have a fairly in-depth playlist regarding just how to steam bend. Both these sheep wagon bows and multiple other styles of different weights of wood that I bend. If you're interested in my steam bending, you can check that playlist out. Well, my table saw is a 198 Fay and Egan. It's an old timer Babbitt bearing saw. It actually runs two 16 inch blades. It's a dual arbor saw. So, but it's heavy enough that I can run this four inch 16 quarter ash through to cut out these axle blanks. So with the center line and angles figured out on my old wood axles, now it's just a process of transferring that over to my new wood axle blanks.
So I think you can see that the design and structure of a wood axle is very similar in principle to that of a steel axle. It's just the approach is a little bit different, but the angles are all the same basically. So now that we've got it transferred over, the question is how do we carve it down to fit correctly? Most all of us are going to do this by hand. Now I have two axles to do. I think I'm going to do one by hand and I'm going to put the other in my duplicating machine and see how the two compare. That'll come up next. Thanks for watching.